the title of this talk is the application of the optimization tools in power system studies. And I want to uh, give you some um, insight about how we can use these tools and what are the nature of them and how um, capable they are in uh, solving some uh, power system related problems. OK, so um, let me start with a very simple example. Suppose you want you are given a circle. OK, and you are asked to fit the biggest rectangle possible inside that circle. OK, so you hear the description of the problem. So the, this is the first step of any optimization problem. OK, so the next step is the mathematical equations that describe the problem for you. So. Uh, in order to solve this problem, um, let's start with uh, writing down the optim uh, optimization objective function. So uh, I solve this problem this way. Okay, so instead of maximizing um, the whole area of this rectangle, I assume that there are four equal area uh, small rectangles. And if I maximize these small ones, then I have maximized the whole area. Okay, so it means that four. Uh, x, y, and this is uh, uh, the, the, the question is how to find this x and y. So this gives you the idea of what is the decision making variable x and y. Okay. So the next step is that x and y should be on the um, circle. Okay. So it means that I have to write a mathematical expression saying that uh, x and y are um, located on the area of this circle. So x squared plus y squared is r squared. Okay. So, uh, and also I want to make sure that X, uh, um, X and Y are inside that circle. This means that X cannot exceed the R or radius of that circle and Y the same. So I have to write down the other constraints. So I have three constraints, one, two, three, and I have one objective functions and I have some decision variables to find the optimal value. And that's it. This is the optimization and decision-making in a very simple way. So there are three stages describe okay so you hear the description of the problem hmm? i want to fit the biggest possible rectangle inside the circle and the next step is writing down the math okay this is a very important part so most of the time this part is not given to you and it's you who should write it down and you should write it in a correct way and finally that's the solve um section okay so it means that i have written down the uh, mathematical expression so i have to find a methodology to solve the best possible of a decision variable for my problem to make the objective function as big as possible since i'm moving toward the maximization direction okay so some of these students most of the time uh, forget about the middle part the math the mathematical part okay so they think that they if they feed any kind of mathematical uh, formula to the solver it can solve it but you need to think about what you are feeding to the optimization tool. This is a very simple example to uh, give you some insight about the optimization. So uh, let's go through the um, more um, meaningful kind of uh, material. So let's say the optimization decision-making is trying to answer some questions, okay? So first of all, what is the objective function? What are we going to do? So we want to maximize the area of a rectangle inside the circle. We want to minimize the total losses in the system. We want to optimize the voltage profile in a power system. We want to minimize the emission of the power system. We want to maximize the benefits of uh, investors in a power system. So what is the objective function? Is it minimization? Is it the maximization part? And what are my decision variables? What are the decisions that I'm going to decide about their values? Okay, this is very important. So before solving any optimization problem, you should uh, think about you as the decision maker. What are you going to change to make your optimization objective maximize or minimize? Okay, so in other words, you need to think about which door you are going to open. Okay, and the next part is the input data. This is a very important part. And um, sometimes, and I say most of the times, uh, we do have some uh, missing data in our optimization problem. So first of all, when you read a paper, you can easily find the data of that simulation. But in real world, when you want to work with, uh, when you want to formulate or simulate some uh, realistic system, it's most of the time difficult to find the realistic data and how to deal with them, how to clean them, how to, um, include them in your decision making procedure so input data are those kind of um, information that you know beforehand when you want to start the optimization procedure and 
Finally, that's the tool that you are going to use for your uh, optimization and decision making procedure. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about two um, famous optimization tools. First one is GAMS, General Algebraic Modeling System. And the second one is a Pyomo, and um, it's a package in Python. It's an open source. The first one is a commercial one. That's why I um, said the title of this talk is um, discussing discussion about uh, different kind of tools, the commercial ones and the uh, open source ones, and how they can be used for solving or problems. So you can see here on this figure, the word translate. OK, so actually, these two tools are not solving any problem for you. They are only a translator of your problem. The actual um, object that is going to solve your problem is that is called solver. OK, so these solvers are developed by mathematicians. And for example, I can name some of them. Uh, you, you might ha definitely have heard the name of the algorithm called branch and bound. So this algorithm is used for solving mixed integer linear programming, okay? Or Cplex or Groovy. Oh, these are all famous solvers in, uh, and they are all commercial, okay? So some people have spent a lot of time for developing these solvers, okay? And these solvers are capable of solving some specific class of optimization problems. OK, so you can easily go and talk to CPLEX solver, but in order to do that, you need to learn C++ or the specific language that CPLEX is using, or you can use Groovy, or you can use any other kind of solver if you wish. OK, but you need to learn that specific language for talking to that specific solver. OK, but GAMS and Pyomo is making your work much easier it this way. So it's you. You are here, okay? And this is the problem that you have formulated mathematically. So uh, initially, no problem is uh, mathematically formulated. You have to do it, okay? So it's before solving the problem, okay? And that's the solver I was talking about. And at the middle of these two um, objects is Pyomo or GAMS or any other tools, okay? So Pyomo or GAMS is connecting your problem to the solver. So it's acting as a translator of your problem to the solver. So instead of talking directly to the solver, you can talk to Pyomo and GAMS. But you might say, maybe it's much easier if I can uh, talk to solver directly. Yes and no. So for example, if you want to talk to the solver called, for example, CPLEX, I, as I already said, you have to learn the language of the CPLEX, okay? And CPLEX is only used for some specific class of optimization problems. For example, linear programming, mixed integer linear programming, mixed integer quadratic programming, okay? And quadratic programming, okay? So these four classes are uh, easily solved by CPLEX. But what if your problem becomes nonlinear? Then at this stage, this solver is not capable of handling your problem. Then you have to go to another solver, for example, called, uh, let's say, IPOPT. It is capable of handling nonlinear programming kind of class. And also minus or K nitro. These are the other solvers. So for every solver, you have to learn a new language of the coding. OK, so um, you can easily see that why using Pyomo or GAMS or any other tool that can act as a translator in the middle is beneficial for you. So you learn one uh, coding language and that translator will translate your problem for the solver. So you can easily switch between the solvers using these tools, okay? So here your role is very important. You are academic, you are industry expert. So whatever role you have, um, it's very important that you are able to uh, describe your problem in a great and well-shaped mathematical way so gams or pyomo can understand what you say and then they will translate what you say to the solvers okay so let's go forward and see what's happening so what type of problems can be solved by gams or pyomo so different classes of the optimization can be solved by these great tools so linear programming quadratic programming mixed integer quadratic programming mixed integer nonlinear programming mixed integer linear programming nonlinear programming or bi-level optimization problems. So what are they? So we do have different types of the optimization. The most um, famous one is a single objective function. So we do have one objective function and we do have some constraints. For example, we want to minimize the total cost of the power system. What are the constraints? The power flow constraints, the 
generator constraints or whatever constraints that you see in the power system. We do have another type of optimization called multi-objective optimization. We do have more than one optimization uh, objectives. So for example, if we want to minimize the losses, we want to minimize the cost, we want to minimize the emissions, we want to maximize the benefits of the investors, we want to and maximize the available transfer capacity, whatever we want, okay? So we can have more than one objective functions in our um, problem. Or sometimes we do have one objective function inside the constraints. What does it mean? It means that, for example, if we want to minimize the costs, okay? But at the same time, we want to uh, have the maximum value of the emission less than something. So you do have two levels of optimizations or more, they call it a um, multi-level optimization problem. They are a bit difficult to solve, but they are manageable, okay? And uh, so you see different types of optimization can be handled by using these great tools, but they are not magicians. You have to be able to um, describe in a more efficient way in order to be able to solve because they can easily grow in dimension in power system. We do have a lot of decision variables. So this means that the solvers have difficult time for solving the optimal solution for you. Okay, so the one example of the Pareto optimal front is given here. So for example, you have two objective functions and you want to maximize both of them. So um, these tools can provide you a Pareto optimal front solutions. What does it mean? It means that for example, it can, not only provide one solution, but it can provide you multiple number of solutions. For example, this orange one and red one. The, the red one is better in terms of objective function two because it's bigger than the objective one. But um, if you compare the red one with the orange one, it means that OF1 is better than the OF2. So none of these solutions is better than the others in all aspects. Mm -hmm. So a set of um, optimal solutions will be um, given by the solver, and then decision maker can choose between all of these uh, found solutions. So if one of them is more important for you, for example, if you care more about the objective function one, you can go with the orange one. If you care more about the objective function two, you can go with the red one. If you want to have a trade off between them, you can choose the blue one or this, um, uh, this one, okay? And also you can do sensitivity analysis. You can um, check the, variation of some input data on your optimal decision and on your um, objective functions. For example, I want to make sure that when I plan my transmission network for the next 10 years or next 20 years, um, some factors are met. And also, since I don't know really what will happen in the near future in terms of the how much demand is going to happen in the system, how much wind is blowing in the future, and how much solar radiation I will have in the system, okay? So I can make some assumptions for the for future scenarios, and for each scenario, the problem is solved, and you need to make a decision now, now, that is working for all other scenarios that might happen in the future. And each scenario has a given some probability factor, okay? So these kind of analysis can be done using these optimization tools. So you might ask me, what kind of problems can be efficiently solved by GAMS or Pyoma? Oh, okay. So for example, I want to make sure that my generating units are um, optimally dispatched. So P is less than S for every I, unit. And if, for example, uh, I do have bus I and J, the flow between I and J is uh, obtained based on this formula, I delta I minus delta J divided by XIJ, which is the impedance of uh, reactance of the line connecting the I and J. So the flow is easily calculated. So if you can generalize the formula that can be easily solved with this formula. So you don't need to write down the flow formula for every given bus in the system. You can easily say, okay, every I and J that I have in the system, and if they are connected to each other, the flow between them is easily obtained based on this formula. And you don't know, for example, if you have 10 generating units, you don't need to say P1 less than P1 max. P2 less than P2 max, and so on and so on, okay? So you can easily say PI less than SI, okay? And I can be any number, 1,500, whatever number, okay? So that can be easily coded in Pyomo or GAMP. So let's talk about quickly about the solvers. So as I already said, 
there are different solvers in the market that can be used for different class of optimization problems, linear programming, mixed integer programming, quadratic programming. These solvers, as you can see here, are suitable for solving these kind of problems. And um, all of them, as you see in this slide, are commercial ones. So if you want to use them, you have to pay for them. For example, Cplex and Groovy provide the academics uh, free trial version, but um, the duration of usage is limited. Of, um, this is natural, but um, the other ones, uh, I'm not sure they will provide academic ones. And also you see here, there are some other solvers that can be solved. It can be used for using, um, for solving the nonlinear programming, which is nonlinear programming. The IP opt is a um, open source one that can be uh, freely used by everybody, but the rest of them are commercial ones. So you see, there are lots of solvers in, um, in the market. So some of them are commercial, some of them are um, open access one. And depending on your class of optimization, you need to choose the right one for your own purpose. Okay, so when you install the GAMS, um, you see that there are some, let me check something. Okay, so I thought I, you have sent me some message, sorry. Um, okay, apologies. Okay, so when you install the GAMS, uh, you see a table of uh, solvers um, that includes in the GAMS. Okay, and each solver is uh, specified in front of it what kind of optimization problem can be handled using these solvers. For example, look at the CPLEX. This is a very famous solver and a very strong one. So here, they, because my dem uh, my license is not valid, it says demo. Okay, so this solver is capable of solving LP. MIP, RMIP, relaxed version of the MIP, and some other kind of uh, models. So you see each solver is suitable of handling some specific uh, version of the problem, not all of them. So you need to be very careful about that. And also if you use Payomo, you have to use the same kind of solver. So actually these two translators are translating the problem for the same kind of solvers. There's no difference between them, but there are some other differences that I will discuss. So if you want to um, um, solve this, install the solvers in Payomo, you have to go to Anaconda and uh, write down the name of the solvers that you want and install it for your own purpose. Okay, uh, let's go forward. And the, the most important thing here is that you have to choose the right solver um, for your own problem. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay, so you can't use CPLEX. It, even if it's a very strong solver for nonlinear programming applications. And let me give you a graphical representation of what's happening inside the GAMS and Pyoma. Okay, so in GAMS, we do have potential solvers. Why is that are... Yeah. So um, you can see here that there are lots of solvers inside the GAMS, but they are not activated. Depending on your license, some of them will get activated, you see, okay? So depending on your application and your license, you can choose and use some of the solvers that are inside the GAMS by, um, by the company, okay? And they will give you the solution and that's it. If you want to visualize the solution, then you have to use MATLAB or Excel to visualize them, okay? But in Pyomo, the solvers are not inside the Pyomo. Pyomo is also a package in Python. So uh, they, and you have to install the solvers, and, and it will give you the solution. But if you want to um, visualize them, you need to use the other packages in um, uh, um, visualization packages, such as Matplotlib and other kind of um, packages, okay? So uh, this is one basic difference between them. And also Payomo is capable of um, using non-commercial solvers, uh, but GAMS isn't. So for using non-commercial ones, Pyomo will not charge you. But if you want to use the commercial ones, you have to pay the uh, fee to the solver providers, not the Pyomo. Pyomo is a free tool, okay? So that's the main difference between And there are lots of uh, capability in uh, visualization, as you can see. So let's, uh, as I already said, there are not much differences between these tools in terms of the um, structure. So if I go to the GAMS elements, I can say, there are lots of elements in GAMS, but basically we can categorize them into five elements, sets, table, parameter, scalar, and variable. So these are the input section. So you can uh, specify your inputs in terms of these uh, three um, parameters. And then you have equations. In the equation part, 
or constraint part, you can say, okay, these are the relations between my variables and my input data, and you can have multiple number of models. What does it mean? It means that model number one can have only first equation. Model number two can have second equation. Model number three can have all of the equations or a number of selected equations. So you can have multiple number of models. So you create the equations and then choose each model will have which equations, okay? And you can solve any of the models that you have developed, okay? But in Pyomo, as I already said, the structure is the same, set, variable, parameter, constraint, instead of equation, they call it constraint, okay? And one objective function. And then solve and then visualize. Visualization is not part of the Pyomo. It's um, done using other packages of the Python, like Seaborn, Bokeh, a letter, a ggplot, and a geoplot, or matplotlib. This is the most famous one, matplotlib. And uh, it's really easy to use because if you are familiar with the matlab command, you can easily use the matplotlib as well. So as you can see, the structure is quite similar, but still there are some uh, differences between the structure. For example, the visualization part of the Pyomo is much stronger. I can't say it belongs to Pyomo, it belongs to Python because Pyomo is a part of the Python uh, language. So let's get started, okay? So um, most of the students, when, I, when they ask me, how can I start uh, launching a missile or sending some missile to the moon? How should I start that? So I always um, reply them, use a very kind of simple problem, like a toy problem. Okay, like this one. It might be funny, but it's very important. If you don't start from the simple one, you can't understand what's wrong, what's not working, what, where is the reason for the error message that you see, okay? And I was reading some um, interesting tweets yesterday. Uh, somebody was saying that programming is not about typing, it's about thinking, okay? So um, however the tool is a strong, it's not understanding uh, whatever you uh, type. So you have to think about what you are typing when you are feeding the data into the code, okay? So um, it's at the end of the day, it's you who is doing the job, not the solver itself, okay? So you have to write down something meaningful to the solver. Okay, so GAMS installation is really easy, but uh, you have to go to the um, website and download the latest version and uh, the version that works with your platform, Linux, Mac, or a Windows system, or other platforms. And then you have to um, install the license. But, and also for the Pyomo, you can easily uh, have access to it using the Anaconda. So you install the Anaconda. And as you already know, Anaconda contains a lot of packages, including Pyomo, and you can use the Pyomo inside the Anaconda. And um, let me go through the elements again. So the sets are, and use for naming more efficiently my variables. So the set of students, set of generating units, set of loads, set of buses, okay, in the system. Table is the same. So for example, you want to give the data of uh, economic dispatch problem to the GAMS. So G1 to G5, ABC are the cost coefficients, P mean and P max of each generating unit. Okay, so you can see the table can be used for giving the data to the problem okay and then parameters are a kind of data it's kind of table but in other formats so one dimensional table can be called parameter and a scalar is a constant number that can be uh, defined and the variables are also very important because we want to find their optimal values they can be defined over without any set or over one set or over multiple number of sets they can be binary they can be integer they can be other types sos1 sos2 uh, if you are interested, you can go and read more about these type of variables. But uh, as far as you uh, learn the first part, the rest of them are easier to understand. So let me solve a very simple example in Pyomo. So look at this uh, simple example. It's a linear programming one, okay? So um, x1 plus x2 wants to maximize it. 2x1 plus 3x2 less than 15 minus 2x2, 2x1 plus 5x2 bigger than one. And both of them are positive numbers. So you have to define, you have to first import the Pyomo package. So initially you have to install it and then you have to define a model. Let's call it the abstract model. x1 and x2 are two variables. They are within the non-negative reals non-negative reals okay and constraint one constraint two constraint one constraint two so you can easily see constraint is a keyword expression is 2x1 plus 3x 
two less than or equal to 15. Constraint number two is the same definition and objective, fun uh, objective function is this expression x1 plus x2 sense is maximization. That's as simple as that, okay? This is the six line coding, okay? And then you have to specify which solver should be used for solving the problem. I have, I'm using GLPK. It's a freely available solver. It's developed by Google. So you can easily use that solver for solving the problem once it's solved and you can have access to the values of the um, decision variables. So you see, this is a very simple object optimization problem. If you can code it, you can code any kind of uh, more sophisticated problems. And if you want to solve the same problem in GAMS, you can easily do it. Again, variable x1, x2, OF, equation eq1, eq2, eq3. So you define the variables here and you name the model example and include all of these equations inside your model. And you can also define the uh, lower limit bound for your variables and then solve it and display the values, as simple as that, okay? So you see there's lots of similarity between these two tools, but the concept is completely different, okay? Even if you want to use this uh, simple example, also, if this works in demo mode of GAMS, if you increase the dimension of the problem, it doesn't solve because it requires a uh, license. And also you can have more uh, information regarding your um, solved models. You can say, okay, the model is solved and the status is normal. And also um, the lower bound of our variables are given to me. Upper bound is um, infinity, lower bound is zero. So the optimal one is 4.5, 2.0 and 6.5 is the objective function, okay? So let's go to the more um, power system related examples. So economic dispatch, this is a very simple um, problem that every power system engineer is aware of it. So we want to make sure that the balance between the demand and generation is kept at minimum cost, okay? So um, we have a set of uh, generating units and we have some data about the generating units. We have some parameters, for example, like demand in every 24 hours time period. And also the scalar can be also defined. And the variable is how much each generating unit should generate in order to satisfy the demand. So we do have some constraints. So for example, power balance, the summation of these generating units should be equal to the demand. And the objective function can be defined as the minimization of the total cost, okay? And we can solve it. So this code gives you the um, solution for that. So quickly go through this uh, code with each other. So we have five generating units, for example, G1 to G5, load is 400 megawatts. And also we have a table describing the characteristics of generating units, A, B, C are the cost coefficients and EF are the emission coefficients, which are not used in this formula and P min and P max are also defined, okay? So if I solve Hello. this, pro solve this problem, um, I can easily say that, okay, I have two variables, P gen and OF. Actually, P gen is including all five variables, G1 to G5. So in total, I have six variables, five in P and one in objective function. And I have two equations. Equation one is giving me the objective function. The equation two is giving me the balance constraint. I want to make sure that the summation of the generating is, is bigger than load. So you might say, why bigger than load? Because it's easier for the problem to solve and it will um, be, at the end of the day, it will be equal to the load because it's no need to generate more than what we need, okay? But using the equality constraint makes it a bit difficult for um, solver to solve it. And also we can say the lower limit and upper limit of each value, decision variable is specified here. So the beauty of this code is that, and uh, the, the code is actually here, the, the, the area I'm showing it to you, okay? So this code is developed for five generating units. Even if you increase the number of generating units to 5,000 generating units, the code doesn't change. Only do you have to update this table and also say instead of five is 5,000, okay? And that's it. And that's the beauty of general algebraic modeling systems. This is the um, format that GAMS and Pyomo are following. So you write down the equation in general form, and uh, you will ask the problem, uh, the solver to solve it for you. And also you can um, code the DCOPF. So in this version of the power flow, as you are aware, uh, we don't, um, we ignore the fact that the lines are lossly. So uh, the, the R value of the lines are ignored and is assumed to be zero. We only have X and the P between each 
pair of buses are calculated delta i minus delta j divided by x i j so it's a three bus unit you have to specify the number of buses one to three which one is the slack bus for example bus number three we have two generating units for example one and two or three whatever okay and also you need to say okay g1 and g2 what are the characteristics of these um, generating units and and also you need to say okay g1 and g2 are connected to which bus G1 is, for example, bus one and G2 is bus three. So here in this graph, number two is off. So that's why it's not included in the formulation. And also we have one PD or P demand at bus number two, which is equal to 100 megawatts, okay? And also the characteristics of the line X and the line limits should be specified. And then let's make it simple. You have to write down the balance equation between um, at, at each node, the summation of PG minus demand at that at that specific bus is equal to the summation of the flow that goes out of this bus to the other buses. And also the objective function is the generation cost of all generating units. And also the line flow PIJ is also calculated here and you can easily solve it. So even if you want to apply the same code to a large power system, it works. You, you only need to specify the line characteristics, generation characteristics, and the demand characteristics, and that's it, okay? So I have to mention one small point, and this is a very important one, is that um, both GAMS and, uh, and Pyomo doesn't understand any word about power system, chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, or um, chemical, uh, or any other kind of engineering, or other disciplines okay they just understand mathematics okay so they know nothing about the power system so even if if you write down uh, the the formulations in the wrong way they can't understand it's wrong they just see it as a as a mathematical formula and then try to find a feasible solution for that so it's your role to write down the uh, equations in a correct way Okay, let's go forward. And there, is, there are other types of uh, problems that are very important in power system. For example, uncertainty modeling. This is a great book uh, written by Professor Conejo, uh, and uh, it's called on Decision Making Under Uncertainty in Energy Market. It has a lot of GAMS code inside that book, and it's uh, dealing with the fact that when we are making optimal decisions in power system, uh, most of the times we face with some uncertainty about the data. Okay, for example, I'm going to dispatch my thermal units for tomorrow, but uh, I'm not sure how much wind is blowing in um, the system in tomorrow. Okay, I have some predictions, and um, but as you know, the predictions are not always correct. Okay, they have some error in inside them. So we have to make decision now, considering the fact that, that you might face something different in tomorrow. So how to um, quantify the risk, how to deal with the scenario modeling system, and how to uh, use these kind of models in energy market is very well described in this great book. So, and there are also other types of the optimization, DC, OPF, AC, OPF, unit commitment, observability, game theory, energy storage, uh, loss minimization, transmission switching. There are all um, other uh, optimization applications that can be done in GAMS or Pyomo. And for example, another application is here, integrated energy systems, how to uh, formulate the interactions between the gas networks and the power system. If there is a flexibility in the gas network can be using the power system, how can we model it? If you have excessive amount of renewable in the power system side, if we want to inject it back to the uh, gas network, how should we do that? These are all other kind of um, power system um, applications that we can do. There is another application. If you want to rank the system buses in terms of some applications, for example, I was uh, I had published a paper called um, Application of the Green Hydrogen in Aviation uh, Industry. So we want to make sure that which bus in the system is the best one. So we run some simulation and found uh, some specific buses are more suitable for uh, putting the uh, power to hydrogen uh, plants in the system. So some visualization is happening here. These are not done in GAMS. The, for, the, the simulation is done in GAMS, but the visualization is done in um, Python, okay? So we can rank the system in based on the simulation we have done. And also the power system observability. Uh, this is a, another interesting application. For example, if we want to put uh, PMU units in the system, PMU units, you might be aware of them. And there are some uh, interesting measurement kind of uh, facilities that can help us to find out 
the voltage at the location of PMU and also the flow of the lines that are connected to that specific bus. If we want to make the whole system observable, it's not needed to put the PMU at every single bus in the system. So for example, in this, in this system, you see, I think it's a 54 bus system, but uh, with a small number of PMUs, we can make the whole system observable, okay? So this is a great application of the optimization uh, modeling. Or another application is we, we have a power system and we want to make sure that the excess amount of uh, renewable energy is used as um, and transformed into hydrogen and how we should uh, you do that and where we should put these P2H facilities in the system. Or we can, uh, let me run this video for you. Okay, so this video is uh, showing you that uh, if you want to measure the minimum electric distance between each pair of buses in the system, how should we formulate that? Okay, this is actually formulated in uh, Pyomo and, and visualize using Pyomo as well. So you see that uh, for a given power system, we can measure the electric distance, not the physical distance, but based on the impedance between each pair of bus. This can give us some insight about the uh, characteristics of the power system. Sorry, uh, I have to run this one as well. So you see that we can also use these kind of analysis to, to cluster the um, buses in the system. For example, based on the um, electric distances of the different buses to each other, we can uh, cluster them. So one application is that, for example, if um, a sudden attack happens to the system, which buses should we um, get out of the uh, operating condition uh, at the same time to um, create the most damage to the system. This can be used by the operating uh, authorities to uh, how to physically harden the system against the different kind of uh, events that might happen in reality, okay? So this gives you a, a lot of information about how system works and how we can use the optimization tools in order to improve the resiliency of the power system, okay? Uh, and finally, this is another work that can be done using optimization problem. It, and it's the fact that um, if you use fax devices in the system, so these fax devices can be used for changing the line characteristics. For example, they can change the X value of the line. So if you, if you change the X value of the line, if you increase it, it means that you are reducing the flow of the line and push it to the uh, parallel passes. And if you reduce the X, it means that you are increasing the flow in the line and you are um, uh, trying to absorb the flows that uh, flow in the other lines to this specific line. So this helps you to uh, manage the congestion of the transmission network, okay? And uh, this is helping us to avoid uh, insulation of the new transmission line in a given system and utilize the existing assets in a more efficient way, okay? And um, some other resources for GAMS in Power System are included here. This is my own book, Power System Optimization Modeling in GAMS. This is published by Springer in 2017. This is another book, uh, which is a very great one. I really like this one, Decision Making Under Uncertainty in um, Electricity Markets. And also it's a more complicated and more advanced uh, modeling uh, book is called Complementarity Modeling in Energy Markets. And also, if you uh, go to GAMS and use it, you, you can see that there is a library called PS Opt library. This is, uh, it contains the models of my book. So when you install the GAMS, it's already on your machine. And also, finally, this is my final slide. Um, if you want to have access to some sources for Pyomo in Power System and actually Python in Power System, you can uh, go and read about this specific package, Py PSA. So this package is capable of running power system optimization problems. But the only problem is that you are limited to the applications that this package defines for you. If you want to learn it by yourself and you want to create some features that do not exist in this specific package, you have to learn Pyomo yourself and try to code everything that you want by yourself, okay? And uh, I hope this has been um, useful for the audience. And this is my... Uh, LinkedIn page. I usually post uh, um, some applications of the uh, objective opt optimization problems in a uh, power system every week. So if you are interested, you can join and uh, use of those sources. Thank you very much. I'm at your um, service to answer to any kind of question that you might have. Thank you very much.